Hi, my name is Philip Lydiard, and I play the character Joseph Carden. And my candidate number is 1039. I'm Shayu Ivan. My candidate number is 2045. I play Mary Timbord. I'm Harlan Jenkins. My candidate number is 1027, and I play Mrs. Amelia Tolbert. I'm Kim Gordon, and I play Karen Wright, and my candidate number is 1019. I'm Megan Campbell, my candidate number is 2004, and I play Martha Doby. What is the matter, Mary? Nothing is right. There must be something wrong or you wouldn't make up these stories so often. Why do you find it so necessary to lie to us? I didn't lie. I went out walking and I saw the flowers and they looked pretty. I didn't know it was so late. Stop! It's Mary. I am not interested in hearing that foolish story again. I did get the flowers near Conway's. You never believe me. You believe everybody but me. It's always like that. Everything I say you fuss at me about. Everything I do is wrong. You know that's not true. Mary, let's try to understand each other. If you feel that you have to take a walk, or that you just can't come to class, or that you'd like to go to the village by yourself, come and tell me. I'll try and understand. But this way, this, this kind of lie you do, it makes everything wrong. I did get the flowers in your Wait, Well, there doesn't seem to be any other way with you. You'll have to be punished. No horseback riding and no hockey. And do not leave the school grounds for any reason whatsoever. Is that clear? Saturday too? Yes. But you said I could go to the motor races. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't go. I'll tell my grandmother. I'll tell her. I'll tell her how everybody treats me here. How they can punish for every single little thing. I'll tell her. I'll tell her. I'll tell her. Upstairs, Mary. I don't feel well. I've got a pain. Mary, go upstairs. I've got a pain here. It's a bad pain. It hurts right here. I never had it before. Ask Miss Dolby to get you some hot water and bicarbonate like soda. It's a bad pain. My heart. It's my heart. Mary, go to your room. What happened to her? She was perfectly well a few hours ago. Oh, she still is. I told her she couldn't go to the boat races and she decides to have a heart attack. Where is she? In her room. Anything really wrong with her? Oh, I doubt it. Isn't it wonderful what kids can think of? Her latest trick was kidding your aunt out of a lesson with those faded flowers we threw out. Then she threatened to go to her grandmother with some, some tale about being mistreated. And please God, grandmother, believe her and take her away from here. Now, 
Let's have no more talk about it, and no more running away ever. Well, I really have to go back there tonight. Of course you do. You don't love me. You don't care about me. You don't care if they kill me or not. Yeah, really? You don't, you don't, you don't love me. I do care that you're talking this way.
last few weeks. I got a message you for Sunday dinners. I've been busy. How is the hospital? How's it getting on? Just the same. Badly equipped. Not enough money. Everybody growling at everybody. Amelia, you didn't bring me here to talk about the hospital. What's the matter with you? I, I, I have something to say to you. Well, out with it. It's yes. a very hard thing to say, Joseph. Hard for you to say to me? Don't be worried about Mary. I guess that she ran home to tell you about her faint. It was caused by nothing but bad temper and was clumsily managed with that. Amelia, she's terribly spoiled. Oh, I heard about the faint. That is not what is worrying me. You're in trouble, Amelia. Yes, we are all in trouble. Bad trouble. We? Me, you mean? Nothing's the matter with me. When was the last time you saw Karen? Joseph, you've been engaged to Karen for a long time. Are your plans any more definite than they were a year ago? You can buy the wedding present, and we'll be married in this room, the way you and I planned it long before we knew the girl. Why has Karen suddenly decided to make it so definite? It's always been definite. You know very well that up to the last year, I've been paying back the money I borrowed for the medical school and, well, you know all that. Now, I'm all right, and the school is pretty well on its feet. Now, it's not like you to waste your time, or to waste mine. What did you call me here for? Joseph, you must not marry Karen. Why must I not marry Karen? What are you talking about? Why must I not marry Karen? Because there's something wrong with Karen. And there's something very wrong for thinking you can talk to me this way. I know what I'm talking about. Mrs. Stilford, Agatha, is she in? Who is that? I won't have her here. What are you talking about? I won't have her here. Then you don't want me here either. Darling, what is all this? What? What's happened, Joe? Is it a joke, Joe? We've come to find out exactly what you were doing. What is it? I... I don't know. What did she do it for? What are you talking about? What do you mean? I tried to reach you. I tried and tried. Hasn't she told you? Nobody's told me anything. I haven't heard anything but wild talk. What is it, Karen? What's happened, Martha? An insane asylum has been let loose. How are we to know what's happened? What was it? We didn't know what it was. Nobody would talk to us. Nobody would tell us anything. Stop it. Tell me what's happened. See if you can make sense out of it. At dinner time, Mrs. Munch chauffeur arrived and said that Helen must be sent home right away. At half past seven, Mrs. Burton came and said that Evelyn must have her bags packed immediately and that she didn't want to enter a place like ours. Five minutes later, the Wells butler came for Rosalie. Why? Why? It was a madhouse. People running in and out, children being pushed into cars. Karen and I begging people to tell us nobody would. Mrs. Rogers finally told us. What? That, that, that Martha and I that Martha and I have been lovers. Mrs. Tilford told them. Did you tell them that? Yes. Are you sick? Are you a sick woman? No, I'm not sick. Then what did you do it for? Because it's true. You think it's true then? You crazy, crazy, crazy old woman! You mean you did say it? You knew what you were saying? Yes, I knew what I was saying. I don't think you should have come here. You damned vision! Oh, I will not call you names, but I will not allow you to call me names. I don't trust myself to talk to you about this now or ever. What is she talking about, Joe? What does she mean? What is she trying to do to us? What did she do it for? For being pushed around by a crazy woman. And we're standing here, we're standing here taking it! This can't do any of us any good, Miss Doby. Oh, this can't do any of us any good. Listen, listen! You're not playing with paper dolls here. We're human beings, see? This is our lives you're playing with, our lives. This is serious business for us. Can't you understand that? I can understand that, and I can understand a lot more. You've been playing with a lot of children's lives. 
that, and that's why I stopped you. I know how serious this is for you. How serious this is for all of us. I don't think you do know. I don't think so. I wanted to avoid this meeting because it can't do any of us any good. You came here to find out if I made the charge. You found out. Let's end it there. I don't want you in this house. So you think we should go there? I think that's what's best. There must be something we can do to you, whatever it is. We must find it! Oh, that would be very unwise. Do you know what's wise? You're an irresponsible old woman, that's all! It makes me sick to stand here and defend myself. And against what? Against a lie? A great, awful oh, lie. I wish I could believe that. There isn't a single word of truth in anything you said. Damn you! They've worked eight long years to save enough money to buy that farm, to start that school. They did so without everything young people ought to have. You wouldn't know about that. That school meant things to them. Self-respect, and bread and butter, and honest work. Do you know what it's like to work so hard for something? Well, now it's gone. What the hell did you do it for? It had to be done. Righteousness is a great thing. I know how you must feel about me. You don't know anything about how I feel. I've loved you as much as my own boys. I couldn't have spared them and I wouldn't have spared you. I believe you. You don't want any part of it, you said. But you'll get a part. More than you bargained for. Are you willing to stand by everything that you said tonight? Yes! All right then. That's fine. But don't think we'll let you whisper this lie. You made it and you'll come out with it. We'll make you shriek it. Shriek it to your town of Lancet. We'll make you do it in a courtroom. Tomorrow, Mrs. Stouffer, you'll have a liable suit on your hand. Please don't do that, Miss Dobie. Oh, it's your turn to be frightened. It is you I am thinking of. I am frightened for you. It was wrong of you to brazen it out here tonight. It would be criminally foolish of you to brazen it out in public. I am an old woman, Miss Dobie, and I have seen too many people act in pride and anger. In the end, they punish themselves. Well, take her own way then! So you took a child's word for it? Yes, that's what she did! That is really where you got it? I can't believe... No, it couldn't be. She's just a child. No, she's not a child. Oh my God. It all fits so well now. That girl, that girl has hated us for a long time. We never knew why. We never could find out. There, there didn't seem to be any reason. There was no reason. She hates everybody and everything. Your Mary's a strange girl. A dark girl. Something very awful the matter with her. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm telling you the truth. We should have told it to you long ago. It's no use. Where is she? I cannot see her. Where is she? I won't have her go through that again, Joseph. I'm going to talk to her. You came here demanding explanations when it was I who should have asked them of you. You attack me. You attack Mary. I've told you before that I don't mean any harm, and I still don't. I know you very well that you know that I wouldn't have acted until I was sure. All I wanted was the children away. That has been done. There will be nothing else, and there will be no more talk about it or about you. I'll see to that. But now you have been in my house long enough. Get out. Let's go home. Have a seat, Mary. Everybody lies all the time. Sometimes they have to, sometimes they don't. I've lied myself for a lot of different reasons, 
But there was never a time when, if I'd been given the second chance, I would not have taken back the lie and have told the truth. I'm telling you this because I'm about to ask you a question, Mary. And before you answer the question, I want to tell you that if you'd like, if you'd made a mistake, you must take this chance and say so. You won't get punished for it. Do you get all that? Yes, Cousin Joe. She's told you. That will be all. No? No. Will you answer some more questions, Mary? Yes, Cousin Joe. Stop that sex three tone of voice! Why don't you like Miss Dobie and Miss Wright? Oh, I do like them. Just that they don't like me. They've never liked me. How do you know? They're always picking on me. They're always punishing me. Wh whatever that happens, no matter what happens, it's always me. How do you know? Because, because they're, they're... All right, all right. Did you get punished today? Oh, yes. And it was because Peggy and Ellen hurt them, and so they took it out of me. That is a lie. Heard what, Mary? Mrs. Morton told Miss Dobie that there was something funny about her. She said she had funny feelings about Miss Wright, and that was a natural. My aunt is a stupid woman. What she said was unpleasant, but it was said to annoy me. It meant nothing more than that. And Cousin Jo? She said every time you came to school, Miss Dobie got jealous, and she didn't want you to get married. She said that. That child, that child is taking little things, little family things, and making them have meaning that. Where did you learn so much in so little time? What do you think Miss Mortar meant by all that talk, Mary? I don't know, but it has always been funny. She